Welcome to Anime Adventures. I'm Elise Bowman, the voice of Pan from Dragon Ball GT. And this is a show where I bring you interviews with anime voice actors and other people in the anime world while I'm at conventions and recording studios. And that's where we are right now. We're at KameaCon, the country's only all Dragon Ball convention. Without further ado, let me introduce the host of the acclaimed series, Anime Adventures, your moderator for this panel, and one of my favorite human beings on the planet. Give it up for the great Elise Bowman. It's good to see everybody for the panel, the classic actresses of Dragon Ball. I'm so excited to be here. We've got a great panel, and so I think we should introduce them, get the actresses on stage right away. Actually, we'll let a few more people come in and get settled. How's everybody doing? Are y'all having an awesome time at the convention? Yeah? So much fun. I love it. Okay, so... Without further ado, our first actress is the voice of Bulma. You know who it is, Tiffany Vollmer. of Mrs. Briefs. I had, a, I had a blonde moment. Isn't that funny? Um, <laughs> we've got Cynthia Kranz. <laughs> Welcome. And our last actress, the voice of Kid Krillin, Lori Steele. So I'm gonna ask some general questions first, and then we are going to open it up to questions over at the microphone. First, our VIP guests, and then if we have time, we'll open it up to other people. So you know what I always like to start with? How did you get started in voice acting? Who wants to go first? Oh, Tiffany, you look ready. Down this way. There's no one for me to look at. I guess it's my turn. Look at us. Or look. You know, uh, I always got in trouble for talking in class, so I knew my voice was going to do something for me in the future. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I started on stage really young, like I was in like runway model shows when I was five. And then just uh, took voice classes and was in choirs and my mom wanted me to be a cheerleader and be really social and I kept doing all the real kiki things like being the president of the theater club and being <laughs> in the choir and still made cheerleader and stuff but I uh, really fell in love with acting and being on stage and just kept working my voice and dance classes and that kind of stuff. And then I had this really great audition when I got out of college, and uh, it was my first professional audition. I'd been friends with Chris Abbott for years, and um, he said, come try out for this show. And I had, uh, was on an acting scholarship at University of North Texas, and I failed my math class. <laughs> so really, if you ask me how I got into voice acting, I failed my math class. And I was stuck in school for another semester, and while I was stuck in school for another semester, I went and auditioned for really? this show. I love that. And that's when you got Bulma, right? That's when I got Bulma. I, uh, he called and I uh, went to the cattle call, call back audition, and I read for seven different voices. And I thought I wanted to be Chi-Chi, because I was like, okay, I don't know this show, but the superhero's wife is Chi Chi, and I bet that chick gets a lot of screen time. So I'm going to do my best Chi Chi voice when I get into that audition. And then two weeks later, Chris Abbott called and said, is Tiffany Bulma Volmer there? And I was like, who's that? And he was like, that's your new character on Dragon Ball Z. And uh, so we started on Planet Nemec, and then exploded, and I thought my life was over. And then we went back into Dragon Ball, and then I was like, I'm kind of a big deal around here. So... <laughs> 
That's awesome. I love it. Lori, what about you? Uh, I was an only child, so I always did voices to keep myself entertained. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think I, t I told you this, that my grandmother would come in and say, you're so strange. You're such a strange child. Because I could hear all these voices in the next room, and I think you're in a room full of kids, and it's just you. <laughs> so then when I went to high school, I did uh, a lot of speech in theater mm -hmm. and uh, traveled doing forensic speech, competition speaking, and went to college on scholarships doing that. And uh, when I got out, I uh, auditioned for a morning team back in Toledo, Ohio. Mm. And uh, they took me like a bird, you know, and just kind of trained me and carried me along and taught me how to do all kinds of things because they knew I could do a lot of voices and they could. So in the mornings, it would always sound like there was this crowd of people and there was just the three of us sitting there doing voices. Really? Yeah. And then when uh, my old roommate was in co from college, who's was uh, on the news down here in Channel 4. And I came down um, to, see, to be with her and she said, you know, you have a much better time down here than you have in Toledo. Yes. Uh, and then I auditioned for Dragon Ball because Chris Rager, Josh Martin, and Mike McFarland, we all worked together at Dick's Last Resort. And they said, well, you do a lot of voices. Why don't you audition for this? So I went in and did a whole lot of voices. And I really wanted to have big boobs and like big hair and <laughs> stilettos. And they said, no. <laughs> You're the short, fat, karate kicking little boy <laughs> with a bad <laughs> attitude. Oh, and by the way, you don't have a nose. <laughs> and so that's what happened. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Who was, who was your uh, roommate on Channel 4? Who was Betty, Betty Smith. She was a, a reporter. Then they, <laughs> they were going to promote her uh, to the main job. Mike, and then they Mike. ended up firing her, calling her Babbling Betty Smith. Oh, no. Oh, she, Babbling. Oh, though, to uh, marry somebody, very nice. My, will you do Mike? Oh, yeah. Mike, yeah. Sorry. Mike. Well, I went on to marry somebody uh, with a lot of money, and she now, she raised all the money. I don't know if anybody knows of where the Arboretum is, yes. but she raised all the money for the children's area. Really? Yeah, so I live right next door to there. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. wow. We're going to have a okay. play date, oh, yeah. okay? <laughs> but yeah, she did. So very that's cool. that's Betty. So what about you, Cynthia? I just... After college, I took acting classes in high school and in college I did some community theater in high school. Um, and then after college, I um, just started doing theater and taking on-camera classes and workshops. Never anything for the voice though. Um, yeah. I had an agent, I did a lot of commercial work and you know, industrial videos and things like that. And then um, I didn't get this through my agent, I got it through a friend of mine who worked at the Dallas Observer and placed the open call. And he and I worked on a um, cable access show, comedy show together, and so we were pretty good friends, and he called me, and it took his third call. He was like, Cynthia, you've gotta go. I'm like, okay, and then I was like, I don't have a chance. I've never done cartoon, like, no. And um, so, wow. yes, 20 years later, um, very That's grateful crazy. that he pestered me. I was going to say he had to call you three times. Because I just didn't think I had a chance. I was really? like, what? I've never done voice anything. So. That's crazy. And look how life has changed. Yes. For you. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Well, that's crazy. What about you? So me, uh, I didn't do acting besides like a church play here or there or something. I majored in accounting, so it was not my plan to be an actor. But then I started pursuing acting, and I was in an improv troupe. We were at dinner one night with the, the fellow troupe mem members, and Mike McFarland was in a different improv troupe. Of course, you guys know him. Um, and he was directing at the time. And I heard my friends talking about anime, and I'm like, I want to do that. How can I get an audition? Like, tell me. Tell me how to do this. And so Mike told me how to do it. I got an audition, and I auditioned for Pan. And that was my first, and I wasn't doing a lot of voiceover at the time. So I love GT, but I also am sentimentally attached because that's really my first anime character. It's what got me started in other voiceover work. So for me, it was the start through improv and then Mike helping a girl out at dinner. Yeah, with a group, a group when of most us. of us start, I mean, like now people watch it and aspire to do it, and and I always say, don't limit yourself to just voice acting, but right. but 
it wasn't a thing. Voice dubbing really, at least in our area, wasn't mm -hmm. a genre like that you trained for or planned for. And you had commercial voiceover. Right. But like, um, it was just a whole different world back then. Yeah, it's interesting. Most of us It's like doing cold readings all the time, but you're actually doing it for real. It is the best to keep yourself sharp for auditions. Yet you have, exactly. <laughs> It's interesting. So the other question I like to ask is how you came up with your character voice. Is either, I mean, for the Dragon Ball character specifically, or is there a way that you come up with all character voices? I mean, I'm a little bit inspired by the way it's drawn, mm -hmm. or like... I know we had to match the Canadian voices as close as we could. Oh, that's right. For you, I forgot but then about we nobody, nobody ever told me that. I, I was, never heard that. On the seven things we read for, I was told to try to match wow. as closely as possible. And um, I have a funny story about that, but I wasn't told to match it. But but I was told to try to it? match it. So that's really interesting. Um, how it's drawn, um, you know, and. and and you can tell by the tonalities when they play it in Japanese how intense it is. And then I always, like, I'm playing a grandmother and a, there's a new show called um, Grandson of a Wise Man and I'm the grandmother, but they're middle-aged. So I asked um, the director, I'm like, like how, how old, you know, and, oh, about your rank, you know. So it just varies. <laughs> it varies. <laughs> your age, middle-aged. I, what about you? When I, when I auditioned for, you know, the show, I had called Chris, like, the, he was like, told, come back to the callbacks, there's still some great roles available. So I called him and I said, hey, Chris, I, uh, I don't really know what I need to be preparing for. You know, like, I don't know, like, how many characters are there? He's like, ah, 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 okay, this is going to be weird, but I need you to break into my house because... <laughs> I am at the studio right now, and we were neighbors. Like, I, I lived like a street over from him. And he's like, so go to my house, and what you're going to do when you get there, just give me a call. And uh, so I called him, and he's like, okay, you're going to go through. The, right by the door, there's a window on the left. Just open the window, crawl through. And in the top left drawer of my desk, there's a VHS tape. And just take that with you. And make sure you shut the window when you leave. <laughs> And look That's over hilarious. that, and then, you know, I'll see you in a little bit. So I did that. I broke into Chris Sabbath's house. <laughs> and I took the videotape home, and I watched through all the voices, like, twice, right? And then I, uh, I went in, and I, uh, I did my audition for Barry Watson. And Barry um, gave me some direction. He really, what, what his vision for Bulma was this very, whoa, over the top, like, whiny, crazy person. <laughs> and, um... But like I said, I wanted to be Chi Chi, so I didn't know. Um, but you know, I did like the boy voices and all the things. And he, I remember him coming out of the booth and shaking my hand and going, you're a very talented actress. Uh, you really read well for everything I could you know, see you in any of these roles. And I'm thinking, keep up the good work, kid. You're gonna go places. I'm sorry we'll I can't do you. anything yet. We'll call you, don't call us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, but for me, Barry was a big inspiration of, you know, he used words like Harold Burnett and uh, things like that for me to do these waterfall lilty things and some of these kind of goofier aspects of Bulma, which some people liked and some people thought was just not super awesome. But I didn't have any direction in my auditions. I was literally shown voices to match. Mm -hmm. I did one reading of each one. And then I left, and then a month later, on my 30th birthday, I found out I got Chi-Chi. Like, I got, there was no direction. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, what different experiences we had. <laughs> That's crazy, yes. It was crazy. What about you, Lori? Uh, I, I was telling you the other night, it's for Carolyn's voice. Years ago, I was uh, crazy about Borden's Elsie. I don't know if everybody, anybody remembers Elsie the Cow. And uh, yeah. uh, so there was a Super Bowl commercial, and I was cast as her son. And I always loved her voice. And as a kid, my mother sent away. I even had a big Elsie head. I was walking around with that. Talk about strange child. And so when they, I got it, they said, this is the voice of Elsie from the 60s. But I did Krillin's voice. The day before the Super Bowl, they pulled the ad. Uh. Obviously, I'm not rich and famous, though. Um, 
but down the road, then when, not, when Krillin came along, I used that voice and there he was. But a lot of times with Funimation, I would go in and they'd say, okay, okay, you're this character today. Okay, think about it. All right, do it. What? Oh, that quickly. They yeah. did that, yeah, yeah, that quickly. They would say, just, all right, do that. Oh, well, all right. And you have to come up with something. I was always good with accents, you know, English accents oh. and Irish accents and things like that. But, uh, Are you talking about like the little bit parts? A little, just any, well, any yeah. character they came up with, they just come up with something and say, okay, today you're this. Yeah, um, so I'd have to be that. And last time I did something, I was Italian in about a hundred, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's, that's it. So my story with Pan, how I came up with that voice. So I played sports when I was younger. And so I really just pictured, and I was pretty intense. I was serious about it. <laughs> so I pictured that feeling for Pan, cause she was spunky, she was a fighter. Um, and then just got a little higher in my register, like grandpa, yeah. Um, so I pictured that. Now when I got the audition, you know, I was so excited to get the audition and then I got sick. And, but I was determined to go to the audition. Well, I had more rasp in my voice for the audition, which you can tell I have no rasp. So then I booked the job and then I was like, oh my gosh, the, once I started recording, the rasp was gone. And so every time I would show up and go, okay, are they gonna keep me? Oh, oh. and so a couple episodes in, I'm like, okay, they kept me. I'm, <laughs> I, got, I got the job. <laughs> but that's how I kind of came up with the character voice. Well, you know, I think because we're, with so many on the panel, we're a little ways in. Why don't we open it up to questions to see what you guys want to ask all of us? So if you have questions and you're a VIP, let's walk over here to the microphone. We're going to have somebody help you. Oh, we've already got one. What's your question? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's Beth. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Beth. I know. She sounds like one of us. <laughs> she does, yeah. And that's Thank a compliment, you. not, you know. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I have a question for Tiffany and um, Tiffany and Cynthia. Um, I really love, like, I really like the couples, Goku and Chi Chi and Vegeta and Bulma. I wanted to know what your favorite part, what your favorite part for them was, as a couple, and did you and your fellow voice actor, like Sean Schemmel and Chris Sabat, did you guys, like, have, oh my goodness, did you guys, like, were there like any funny moments or something? Like, I I wish that I wish that there were. Um, I mean, Chris Abbott is one of the busiest people in anime, as you guys can see from <laughs> the lines to his signings. So uh, if he wasn't directing me, there was no way I was gonna ever cross paths with him, which worked really well because Vegeta is kind of like that too. He's just so busy, <laughs> like being a Saiyan and like hating on Goku. So. Uh, I think that worked actually in our best interest that I could still be this cutesy little thing that was just going to be there no matter what. I'm not going away. Uh, and so I think, you know, that's pretty much... I liked it when I made him wear a pink shirt, you know. and Yeah, that, that was hilarious. All the bad man shirts running around today just make me smile so big. Yeah. Well, stuff. Vegeta hates the color pink. He hates it. I'm a flower. Not some, or I'm a, a, whatever, a hero, not some flower. I'm, I'm a, a warrior, warrior not, not a variety. A flower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? right. I Wasn't wish we line. got to interact and have say so, like, you know, oh, it would be great if we did this or that, but I mean, it is just one character at a time in the booth, unless you're doing a Walla session, which is with all others' background. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they just, told me how it was going you know they we're very dependent on our directors right yes. to give very us the backstory so. of you know i didn't know the show i had never even heard of the show so he's just like you're pissed off all the time your husband is never here you know um <laughs> you're the only person in the universe he's afraid of and um <laughs> I really, yeah, I love, I love yelling at him. I, I can't lie. <laughs> I, I'm uncomfortable when I'm, oh, you know, all ooey gooey. There, thank goodness there were only one or two of those scenes ever. I just found out last year at this con that they had never kissed Aww. because we found out in Super that Go 
who does not know what a kiss is. So that makes for an interesting couple. Right. Like Vegeta says, he's an idiot. <laughs> Very true. Thanks for the question, Beth. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Who else? Just one question. Oh, okay. We got somebody else. Yeah, what you got? My, my legs are. I had to sit down. Um, okay, so for Cynthia and Tiffany, there was this special where they were, Bulma and Chi Chi were arguing over the, yeah, that one. The husband <laughs> swapping. Okay. In the show, which one would you want as your husband, really? And then in real life, the actor. So Sean and Sabbath. Oh. Wait. So I, I don't think, understand did the you question. say which one, which one would you want on the show as your husband? And then in real life, which one would they want as their oh, husband? Oh, it's like yeah. marry, wow. marry, kill, uh, make out with. <laughs> you guys know where I was going with that. But, but like with the actors and with the characters. So like... I'm pretty happy with my real husband. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to keep him? <laughs> I'm going to keep him. Um, I love them both. I think they're awesome. I don't I, know if I'm I, answering your question. or You can answer that way. Yeah. But um, I can't imagine being married to either one. Love them to death. <laughs> um, I, you know, Goku's like my little brother, and that'd be kind of weird, even though, you know, we, he... He learned a lot about women from me. <laughs> not, not by choice, by the way, by accidentals. Um, so that would be weird, I think. And uh, Vegeta. And then in real life, I don't know. Oh, I could not handle Sean. I would kill him. <laughs> Chris Sabin and I we could at least sing together, because that's what we, we did when we would hang out in college. But I, no, I would absolutely kill Sean. <laughs> and I mean, I love Sean Chivel because he's always on. I mean, that guy's great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Did that answer your question, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the first time I've ever had that question. Oh, that was a good one, yeah. That's good. Yeah. A brand so, new one. Hey there. Howdy. Uh, so I was, uh, this is just a fun one. What would be your character's favorite candy bar and why? Oh, favorite candy bar? Yeah. I like this one. Or candy. Or candy. Yeah. Um, mine would probably just because, wow, it's hard not to say I what know, my favorite I candy know. is. Mine would not be Making chocolate because thing. Boo turns me into chocolate and eats me in the Boo Saga. So I'm going to stick steer away from anything chocolatey. Cynthia, you could probably agree with me on that one. With what? On, on no chocolate, because we get turned into chocolate and eaten by I boo. I get turned into an egg and stepped on. <gasps> oh, I thought you got turned into chocolate, too. No, just, just <laughs> so not, no candy eggs. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think what would I like. I'm going to go with you... nerds. This is a hard just one? Just because I like this them. This is a really hard question. It That's is a hard question. actually yes, smart. Yes, it's fun. Nerds. nerds would be good. I like nerds. I like nerds. In my personal life. <laughs> or maybe just Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Twizzlers? Uh, yeah. It would probably be a Snickers. I was going to say Snickers, but now I can't, so I'm... This is the hardest it question It is the of hardest the question panel. I've ever had. <laughs> what would it was Chi supposed Chi to be fun. Like? <laughs> Chi Chi, what would she like? I don't know. And then one uh, what's time something bitter? What's a bitter, <laughs> sour... What are, Mounds has Lemon nuts. Lemonhead. Mounds has nuts, and she's nuts, so I'm going to go with Mounds. <laughs> Thank you. That was Thank awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Hey there. Hi, this is for Cynthia. Um, mm -hmm. The character of Chi Chi had a, a, a somewhat of a martial arts background, but then just kind of just dropped off for the most part, except for one reintroduction with uh, when she's fighting Goten or training Goten. Would you like to see that character at some point jump back in and with with the Z team or oh, just your know, mom? Yes. A, because that's fun. B, because it would be a whole lot more screen time. By the way, you were so <laughs> wrong about the screen time. <laughs> yeah, um, I figured that out later. I have done some video games um, where she does fighting, and that's really f Yes, I would love it. So if you could please wire Japan that, um, <laughs> that Chi Chi's request, that the American voice actress... <laughs> Who plays Chi Chi would like some more fighting scenes written in. That would be awesome. I'm sure they'll take care of that oh, for you. Yeah, oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. I have so much pull. <laughs> Thank you. Good one. Thank you. Howdy. Howdy. 
Hi. So, uh, with Disney's recent acquisition of Fox Studios and their control over the Dragon Ball movies, and Chi Chi being the Ox King's daughter, Bulma being married to the Prince of All Saiyans, does that mean that we have two new Disney princesses? That we have what? That we have two, two we new have Disney what? princesses. Chi Chi and Bulma. Oh, oh my two gosh. Two Disney princesses. What? I wi- well, if I could make it into one of those movies, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'd, I'd like to see that Chi Chi's uh, Disney princess um, story. I would love Disney to be, princess. yes. She thinks she's a princess. I mean, I guess she kind of is. But as Chris Sabat said, she's like rough, like trashy, <laughs> trashy. That's how he directed me. He's like, she's rough. She's trashy. So, oh. um, so yeah, I'll be the trashy, the trashy Disney the princess. Trashy Disney princess. Well, kind of I'll be like any Mulan. kind of princess. I can't imagine. I mean, Bulma's already pretty much a princess, and starts like, oh, thank goodness for industrial strength hairspray. I mean, she's just <laughs> <laughs> death, and I don't even have any mascara on. <laughs> How much more princess do you get from that, right? And I want to see what her dress would look like, though, for, like, the ball gown oh, scene. Oh, yes. Because every princess has a ball gown scene, I right? I wish that they would change Chi-Chi's outfit. At least Bulma gets some cool outfits. I do get cool I have some oh, cool hairstyles. I hate hairstyles. Chi-Chi's That's outfit. Tough. I hate it. I hate you it. get some <laughs> cool hairstyles, too, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did when you had hair that one time. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. 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 What was Hi this there. for all you get all of you? What was your favorite line to say during Dragon Ball? Our favorite line. What's your favorite line? Oh. Mine is how am I how am I supposed to discipline a kid who can fly? <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is because good point. Like well, yeah. I can't ground him. I think mine was the go- going to the tournament. We're going to a tournament. We're going to a tournament. Uh, I really love the, ooh, Vegeta, you need a bath. <laughs> <laughs> and for Mrs. Briefs, um, oh, you're so handsome. Would you like a snack? Oh, that's And cute. she's always, la, 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 while she's doing laundry. I wish she was on screen more. Well, I feel like I was always saying, Grandpa! Um, I, liked, I loved the fighting, the yeah, yeah! And then my favorite line is probably one y'all don't think of a lot, but cheeseburgers, fries, and blueberry pies. Because if it's been a long time since I voiced Pan and a video game comes up or something, that's what I kind of use to trigger. Uh, trigger me into the voice, and so now people will be like, oh, Elise, are you going to a convention to eat cheeseburgers, fries, and blueberry pies? Like, yes. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, I'm hey. sorry. Hi. I um, actually just had the question of how you guys feel about the, she's not canon, but Bulchi fusion. Like, if Bulma and Chi-Chi fuse together oh. to, like... Oh, or. if you fused. Bolchi. Yeah. Chima, what would it be? Uh, or Chima. There, there's both, but. I think, I think Bulchi is where it's at. <laughs> wow. We'll have your martial arts skills and okay. my brains. Oh, my God. I'm going to fight for the blue hair. We would be, like, masters of the universe. Like. We would. I could use a little bit more of your anger. I could use a little bit more of your style. And, 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 <laughs> and, and less of my whininess. <laughs> less. So. <laughs> it would be the perfect character. It would be the perfect character. <laughs> Somebody write that and animate it, and we will get together and voice it for you. Two mints, two mints, two mints. I do, yeah. I have them on my shirt. I have the Gogeta oh, you've got them. and then oh, Bolchi yeah. Fusion. Oh, yeah, what? come see. I can't see it. Okay. Come to she us. She has them on her shirt. Get on the stage uh, in the lights. Yes, come on. You can, oh, my gosh. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Wow. That is awesome. Oh, I, I love, love us. We are so wow. good, yes, right? It. And I got Ooh, the blue so hair. So hot. Woo! I love that. <laughs> oh, it's by an artist online. That's awesome. Oh, Vegeta Psycho. Very cool. 
little plug well, there for Vegeta. We're Psycho. pretty hot. Thank that you. They, they drew us hot. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we're hot, but watch Lori get the voice job for that. <laughs> You'll get your stilettos, girl. We got them coming. Okay. <laughs> so, Lori, what was your favorite thing about doing Kid Krillin? Uh, I just loved him because he, because <laughs> he was so cranky. You know, he was just <laughs> angry all the time. <laughs> but he was just fun to do. You yeah. Know? He, did, he just could be cranky and silly, and God, he was always getting pissed off. But I just thought he was fun. A lot of fun to do. If you were having a bad day, did you feel like, oh, oh I yeah. can go take it out in the oh, studio because yeah. I get to be cranky there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey there, what's your question? Uh, hey, so, Lori, I love you. You're amazing. Uh, and then for, this is for everybody. Um, so Dragon Ball has a lot of characters and each one has a distinct and unique personality. Uh, Bulma's always been like super strong, intelligent, and uh, very independent. Chi Chi was a fighter and she transitioned into a mother who maybe loves too much. Uh, there's Videl who was also a fighter and transitioned into motherhood and of course like Pan, the adventurer. So Dragon Ball has shown what women are capable of, um, but what are your thoughts about Dragon Ball um, and its efficacy as a feminist resource? What was the last part? What are uh, our thoughts about Dragon Ball? And, and its efficacy as a feminist resource? Oh, yeah. So. I find it really important that I was able to play a character that was very aware of her feminine side. And even though that may not be a PC thing all the time, she used it delicately and did not really take advantage of it, but she did. But she was also intelligent, and you get to see the arc of Bulma. She's this really awkward, shy girl who's trying to wish for a boyfriend. And through these experiences, she grows into this um, other person, and then through motherhood, she, you know, just the arc of her entire character, I find really inspiring for women, and I hope that in my personal life I can be a role model the way I feel that Bulma has also inspired me in the way that, that I've grown in, in my life as well and in, in motherhood. That was good. That's so much deeper than my answer. <laughs> That's really deep. Well, I definitely love that I get to play a very strong female who I don't think is aware of her femininity, but then I play a very feminine one who's not the brightest bulb in the box so um, I get to play both and I love that um, I think Dragon Ball is very respectful I mean I think they show plenty of girl power right mm -hmm. I, I mean I think so yeah I mean yeah. Videl Pan everybody fights and I mean you know the fact that Bulma is such a genius and she doesn't even like use that as her thing you know she she like, she doesn't really get the credit she deserves, I don't think, but she just, she sticks with it and she keeps those boys in line and she kind of has this self-confidence that she doesn't really need their approval, you know what I mean? Yeah. She just doesn't want to be left on an exploding planet, if that's okay. <laughs> and everybody yes. gets mad at Chi Chi for um, wanting her kid to study and not go off and die, but I mean... <laughs> she's a I mom. Gotta say, when she's you put a it that way. mom and... You know, she cooks a lot, but I also love that she's the only being that Goku is scared. Everybody's scared of her. I love it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I loved doing Pan. I felt she was tough and fun and spunky, and I mean, it was fun doing that character. Lori, do you have a comment? No. No? Uh, I know, but... <laughs> Just kidding. What they said. What they said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Yeah. Yeah, come back up to the mic. I know I'm the same one, but I thought of another question immediately. Sure. To Tiffany and Cynthia, what would you say if, in an alternate universe, Chi Chi and Bulma were Saiyans? If they were Saiyans? I mean, it's... We're completely unstoppable. <laughs> no one would have a chance. Oh my God. All. I would love to see my hair go white. I know. I want to see the veins like <laughs> across my chest and in my, you know, I want to see the, and like where are they going to show up on my face? Because that's important. I might need to get a better concealer. I know. <laughs> and as mad as she gets anyway, I can't imagine the explosions that would happen when she was pissed Talk off. Talk about a spirit bomb. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is for Cynthia. Um, I was curious, did you ever get to uh, try out for Kid Chichi? No, we were we just, just talking about, about that. that. On the way in. Oh, okay. um, I didn't get to. I would have loved to, but I mean, who can argue with Laura Bailey's talent? But I was a little. My feelings were hurt when I found out that there was one, and I wasn't even allowed to audition for it. Oh. But it would have sucked more to audition for it and then not get it. So, I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> True. What would she have sound like? Um. Oh my gosh. Well, my normal voice, and then we young it up a little bit. Go, cow! <laughs> okay. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh. Hi, ladies. I have one question. It is for everybody. Okay. What actress inspires you? Oh, what actress? Yes. Ooh, that's a good one, too. What actress inspires you? I love Holly Hunter. <laughs> like, yeah. I know that's random. I random like that. and specific, but, but I love But I it. just, I will watch anything she's in. Well, you know, so I feel like I should say something genius like Meryl Streep. But, uh, well, you can still have that answer. Okay. Because okay. the actors who's, who get my roles are Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Garner. And sometimes Jennifer Lopez. Because I like romantic comedies. Ingenue. Uh, it's called Ingenue. Uh, oh. <laughs> it was, it was a beautiful, you're a beautiful girl. It's an Ingenue. Oh, oh, thank you. But, but no, I like, I mean... Always. You are dainty. I know I'm you're dainty? athletic, but you are. You're right. very feminine. Feminine. <laughs> You're strong. You're athletic, but you're very but feminine. Jennifer Garner was tough. In I know, and she's also very... Oh, thank she's, you. Yeah, she's but not I'm, a brute. <laughs> <laughs> Chi Chi's a brute. <laughs> so what about... You can have Meryl Streep back. Well, Meryl Streep or Helen Mirren. Oh, oh absolutely. Gosh. Yes. yes. Love her. Love her. <laughs> um, I would say... Uh, I just had this a minute ago. Oh, well, Carol Burnett. I love oh, her. Yeah. I love comedy. I, mm -hmm. I feel of myself. I was lucky to get a voice job, but I also consider myself an entertainer. And uh, as of late, my doppelganger, Amy Schumer. Oh, my God. Uh, I love her. <laughs> she, she lives. Is your she, doppelganger. She just moved to New Orleans, and I had to move out of New Orleans back to Dallas because I don't think we could exist in the same city. <laughs> wow. And what's really funny is people will come up to me all the time, and they'll go, there's some game out there on Facebook or Instagram where you, like, get your picture taken with somebody that looks like a famous person. So people come up to me all the time and they're like, oh my God, you're so famous. Can we get our picture with you? And I think they think I'm Bulma. And then they're like, oh, Amy, you're so cute. And I'm like, that's only because I'm kind of chubby right now. When I'm really skinny, I look more like uh, Kate, uh, what's Goldie Hawn's daughter? Hudson. Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. But, Kate Hudson. You know, whatever. I love Amy Schumer and I love her personality and um, you do have a lot Carol of her Burnett. humor. You do. Thanks. I didn't think about it when I saw you, but... She has my career because my mom would kill me if I talked like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the question. Fun question. Um, my question's mostly for Cynthia, but anyone can answer it. Um, sorry. <laughs> Take a breath. <sighs> We're all here in the room with you. Dancing breath. Three, um, two, one. Do you think that maybe as parents, Goku and Chi Chi kind of balance each other out because Goku is more laid back and has a more, uh, forget the word for it, but just a more laid back attitude, whereas Chi Chi is more strict. And, Definitely. Uh, they sort of, I like to think that they kind of balance each other out in that because they have communication, you see it. Um, I they, think they, you hit it on the nail. No one's ever mentioned that to me before, but absolutely. Yeah, like he's he's like, <laughs> you know, taking him off to do dangerous things all the time, and you know, and very careless, and and she's always all about the study and the be. Don't forget your toothbrush when they're going off to <laughs> another planet. So yeah, because bad breath is a problem yeah, for a saying. Yes. Let me tell you what. Am I yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Although Sean gets. We had a panel last year with our fam our immediate family, all of our characters, and they were, I mean, he was making fun of himself. It was like the worst dad ever, and you know. Um, then he decided that he's not dumb, 
that he has been <laughs> gaslighting everybody, that he's really smart, but plays dumb because he's lazy and he doesn't want to have to do anything except fight. <laughs> so, I do think they balance each other out, yes. Good question, thank you. Hey, so hey this, this question is for Tiffany. Um, I'm just curious um, as to what you think about the evolution of Vegeta and Bulma's relationship. Like, since, you know, it started, you know, like, he was so indifferent towards her, and then towards the end of Super, like, he started to realize, you know what, I actually do love her, kind of. Oh, it's my favorite part of the story, um, just because, you know, something happened in that little pod where she got him to that next level, and I think it just blew his mind, and he had a different respect for her. And I think, too, you know, uh, with the coming of Trunks and motherhood, I think, in, in general, that changes people and you know she was that woman earned her place in life because she created trunks you know what I mean like so I think that helped yeah I feel you on that if that answers your question yeah yeah absolutely hello um I got the honor of actually talking to most of you earlier um and one of the questions that I actually asked each of you was so do you do this often? Do you come to uh, conventions like this and talk to people? Um, and it was, I, it, most of, uh, well, all three of you kind of said, well, not, this isn't like a weekly thing for us. Um, so this is a question for everybody. What's been your favorite um, part of Comic-Con? So we're only halfway through. What's your favorite part of Comic-Con so far? Of this particular weekend? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite part? Meeting you guys. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I'm not up against Jason Momoa. <laughs> I'd like right. to be up against Jason Momoa. I had a weekend like that, too. I've, I've, I've had my time with him, and Elijah Wood and I have had breakfast <laughs> together. I mean, he was in the green room with me, but I mean, you know, we had breakfast together, right? So um, everybody's here to see us and talk about what we know about, and that's pretty exciting. I love talking to everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, He's much nicer to his fans than he, are, he is to the other celebrities in the green room, by the way. Same thing with Hercules. Yeah, it's nice not having to compete with William Shatner and Hercules and... Hercules, Even Elvira. Hercules, Hercules. I mean, my gosh. She, and Elvira, she's like her lines like no, forever. No, but I'm amazed at the passion of the Dragon Ball fandom. And Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. How People far come away from so you guys far. come and that how intricate you get in your... Um, your knowledge and uh, of, of the your characters wardrobe, and the everybody's art. dressed awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, the costumes. I love for the sure. cosplay. Yeah, I too. And I was gonna say, I love hearing the stories. Like people have given me specific so stories about here something was going on in my life, and here's what Dragon Ball GT or Dragon Ball Z or whatever series meant to me. So I, I love talking to you guys. You know, because we can't believe you got to understand. We hop in a box. We say some literally words and a we tiny leave. box. Yeah, ten years and in a little group that anyone, screaming at a TV screen. That anyone watches it, it or so as, that they care, and if it got them through a hard time, um, yes, it's humbling and it's wonderful. It's and thank you humbling. guys. We so wouldn't be here without y'all. Yeah, I was yeah. on a panel once with Mike McFarland and uh, Colleen Klinkenbeard, and uh, they they somebody asked, you know, do you ever tell people who you are? Like, if you see, if you know they're a Dragon Ball Z fan. And they're like, absolutely not. No, 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 no. We would never do that. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of my superpower. Like, my <laughs> secret superpower. Like, I can blow minds when I really want to. Like, if I want, you know. And, and I got into acting to make people happy. Like, I'm here to give back to you and share my energy. I'm not a narcissistic person that needs to, like, be the center of attention. I don't mind it, but that's not my end goal in life. My end goal is to bring joy to people. So if I can blow somebody's mind, you know, just because we have a common interest and that's kind of what I'm doing this for. So that's that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm back. Um, so I think this will be just pretty fun to think about. How do you guys think the world, the real world, would react if Bulma actually existed and created a time machine and she's so smart and all that? Oh dear. I think they have places for her, like Bellevue. <laughs> um, like they, they'd be like, yeah, sure lady, you totally have a time machine with that whiny voice. And yeah, no, I don't, I mean, I think it would be like, 
you know, uh, I gotta watch how I say that. Um, yeah, I don't know that the world would be ready for her <laughs> or any of her skills or uh, lack thereof. So it would be a little uh, overwhelming. I think they'd be like, yeah, sure, lady, let's go do some shock therapy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello there. Hello. Hi. I met um, all four of you yesterday saying thank you for everything you've done. And oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, audience, give them a round of applause for being oh, here. Come on. thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank thanks, you. guys. <laughs> thanks, and guys. My question for all four of you is that um, how do you feel about the, um, the direction your characters have gone so far from where you guys started out with them to how they are now with either different act actors and actresses doing it or what you've heard? And for Miss um, Elise, how do you feel about Pan being born in Super? Would you like to come back? And what different way would you want her character to go this time instead of, as opposed to in GT? Like, we want her character to be different or same? Oh, gosh, great question. So I loved Pan in GT. I had so much fun doing her in GT. I'm so glad she's been born in Super, so we've seen her as a baby. If she comes back, of course, absolutely. I would love to do her. I hope I get to do her. And gosh... The direction, I don't know. I think um, just more like what we have of Pan and then d more discovery of who she is. And well, of course, there's discussion like, would she go Super Saiyan? Because she technically could. So that would be interesting to pursue. Of course, I'm not writing the story, so I don't know. But I would love to investigate that and see what happens with Pan. <laughs> what about you guys? I like that Chi Chi made Goku be a farmer. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> okay, Lori. I honestly haven't seen a lot of it since I did it, so mm -hmm. I can't I can't tell you about Krillin too much. Well, I mean, I know Sunny yeah. very well, but I don't. You know. Well, he's a father now and is happily married. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. He became a policeman. He got hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that um, I, I loved being the OG, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't really even know. I, I haven't watched it lately. Like the super, I'm, I would like to to see, but Kai, I, you know, I kind of already lived that show, so um, I'm interested to see what Super has to offer because I haven't watched it yet. But I'm very interested to see what, where, where she goes from yeah. here. And I know that she has some really lov lovely moments with Vegeta. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. And let's see how many more times I can kill Krill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for one more question and then we're going to wrap it up. So, what you got? How are you ladies doing today? We're great. Good. Good. How are yeah. you? So, my question is... Um, Everyone here pretty much has a character that they relate to on the anime and stuff like that. For instance, for me, I was related to Goku at first, but being a father now, I relate a lot more to Vegeta in a way that he brings up. His son, you don't want him to bring up too soft and stuff like that. But anyways, my question to you um, ladies are, which characters um, do you relate to on the show, even if it's not your own character? Which characters do you see yourself as? Oh, that's a good one. Which character? I mean, I don't know that I, I mean, I, I relate to Bulma all the time because I'm, she's a little, there's a little part of her in me and it's, it slips out often. Um, but I like Mr. Popo. <laughs> I love Mr. Popo. And I, I have some boo moments too. So, you know, when he's all cute and stuff. <laughs> Master Roshi. <laughs> yeah, because you work at Dick, Dick's Last Resort. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. What about you, Cynthia? I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I have some chi-chi in me. I'm not a mom in real life except to animals, and I married an adult toddler. <laughs> I don't yell all at did. him all the time. I, I don't. I don't. I don't yell at him all the time, but he has brought out that horrible screeching sound before, only instead of Goku, it's... <laughs> so I don't know I relate to her she's a worrier and I'm worried if he's not home when he's supposed to be I'm not like assuming he's doing something bad I'm assuming he's dead in a ditch <laughs> so um, he eats a lot I cook a lot so um, I guess I actually have to relate a little bit to her which is not necessarily the most flattering thing <laughs> 
So I'd say too, Pan in a sense, because after doing Pan, I ended up doing Taekwondo because I wanted to learn some of the martial arts. So I'm very, like I'm an advanced purple belt. So you I'm got very sad scary. when I called you feminine <laughs> and delicate. Dainty. Touch you. Dainty. <laughs> so I did that. And then probably the worrier part of your character. So I do have a young little one. Um, and I am the worrier. I am the one who's like, well, let's just like do something simple and not go fight. And <laughs> take your toothbrush. And, yeah, so I'm that. So I, re I, I relate to the mom part of that that was a great question well hey let's wrap it up because it is very close to quitting time of this panel thank you guys you have been so much fun we and love you so yes. much you. we love you so much round of applause for you and then let's give the actresses a round of applause thank you thank you thank you guys for coming this is one of the biggest panels i've ever had this the pleasure fun. to be at. So, and yeah. thank you for moderating. Oh, we were talking backstage. We're like, is are, are there actually people? Yeah. Up? Every <laughs> time we go to a panel, I don't, I don't know. We do, I always do. I don't, I'm sure Sabbath doesn't have that thought, but oh. most of us are like, is anyone gonna come? What if nobody shows what up? If, and I've had no one show up on a Sunday at 10 o'clock in the uh. morning. You know, that sucks when people. So thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for coming. Really do appreciate it. So. Y'all have a great rest of the con.